Uh -huh. Here. How's it going now? Is it all right? Success. Hmm. See the mic? Is it going? Is it well? Is it the this, this sound? Can you hear the sound? Yeah? Good? Still don't listen? No? Can't you hear me? Well, let's see what's going on now. Oh. What is going on? Good? Oh, very good. Very good. So, good morning. Morning for here, for us here in Brazil, at least. We are here 8 a.m. Uh, this is 11 a.m. GMT also. Hope you can hear me well and you can see my, my screen now. I know this is not what you are used to seeing uh, in my presentations. This is an, a completely informal environment, so uh, I ask my apologies. You see some cats coming in, some dogs coming in. This is my home, so it's probably something that's going to happen during our presentation. But it's okay, okay? It's part of the game. Guys, today uh, we are in our warm-up uh, uh, live for our 20th webinar. You know, it's a free webinar I'm going to give to you in a few days. And uh, this is a warm-up live. I call warm-up live because I want to show to you some situations that you are probably going to stumble against in your own office. And you're going to see that in our, in our live. You're going to see the solutions for several problems that you can uh, come up with in your office, in your daily practice. This is something that is good for those who are uh, initiating uh, the treatments in the, their offices, in their practice. Also for those uh, who are uh, not completely um, sure about what you do in some situations. And for all orthodontists that have some doubts on biomechanics, meaning almost everyone myself included okay sometimes i go to some courses and what i see in those courses is this some tips that help me in my daily practice in the way i do orthodontics i hope i can do the same for you today in our upcoming lives and uh, the webinar guys let me show to you some problems that are very common in our uh, treatments one of those is we take for granted that when we use high hooks in our practice, we do everything like a magic. Meaning we see the hook, we see the, the line of action of the force, and we may, think, we may think that, okay, that's what I need. I have a situation like this, for example, in which I'm going to do the retraction of upper anterior teeth. You see the anterior teeth as a unit. You may think, uh, this anterior teeth as a, a unit, one unit going distal in our movement. But is this really true? Sometimes we, we even feel that when we do this type of mechanics, we are controlling the vertical, we are controlling the torque, we are doing uh, things in the best way we can. But I must tell you this, this is not true. In most of the cases, when we don't have a rigid unit for doing the distalization, we are not doing this type of movement that we think we are doing. Let me give you this example here. Let's say I'm planning to do the distalization of the anterior segment, including the force in this type of movement, because I'm going to show to you one case that I treated this way. And during the distalization, uh, I'm applying here the TED for this, I'm doing the mechanics with the TED and doing the horizontal line of action, generating the horizontal line of action of the force to distalize into your segment to, con to correct the overjet. Oh, yes, this is very common in your practice, in my practice, in everyone's practice. And if you're thinking now, oh, it's not good to do this, it's not good to do the extraction, or I'm not going to uh, get into this type of discussion because this is not science. Yes, we need to extract in many situations, and it will be for a long time this way because we can't change the environment this way. Sometimes we need to extract. Let's focus on that. 
So don't think about other things here. Doing the distillation, I'm using the high hook, and sometimes what I feel is that doing this, because of the deflection of the hook, I'm controlling the segment, the anterior segment, going up in anterior, and this is good because I know that in many cases, I lose inclination and also lose and also increase the overbite. And uh, I want to control the overbite. So it seems to be good. But look, when we th think about it, when we see this, we may be disregarding some flaws in the system. The biggest flaw is the play inside the slot. When we have a play inside the slot, we are going to have this type of movement. You see, I'm not doing the distalization uh, of the anterior segment as a body. It's not happening. Why is that? Because we let the anterior segment uh, lose inclination and extrude also because of the flaws, because of the mistakes we are we are making now. Look at this. Uh, and we're going to have the vertical, the extrusion of anterior segment and the uh, intrusion of posterior segment opening the bite in posterior segment and uh, deepening the bite in anterior segment of the occlusion why is that happening because we didn't pay attention to one thing that is in the system and we can't we can control we must control which is the rigidity of the system in this case you are going to end up this way look at that so even though we have the deflection of the hook, the high hook, we have the deflection of the hook this way, we are not really going to intrude into your segment because into your segment, we have six teeth, including canines. And when we have it, we look at this, we will generate this type of movement. Look, rectangular arch wire. This is a 1725 arch wire inserted in a 2230 slot, meaning I still have play inside the slot. And if I have play inside the slot, even using the high hook and uh, trying to reach the anterior segment uh, center of resistance, we are not really going to do that. Why is that? Because we can't consider anterior segment as a unit since we have the play inside the slot. Having it, look at this. In a situation in which I'm using 1725, 1925 uh, arch wires in this 2230 slot, we are going to generate the we are going to generate the inclination uh, of the, the the crown distal. Palatally, the inclination of the crown is going palatal and the root is going buccal. Both things are bad for our treatment in most of the cases. We want to control the retraction, keeping the inclination or losing a little bit of that inclination if we have a very big inclination, but we must try to control that. First mistake, using 1725. Don't do that. 1725 stainless steel may think may be uh, in our minds a good option because uh, we think about the friction. We decrease the friction in the process and we can have a better type of mechanics. We can have a more efficient mechanics of the distalization of anterior segment. It's not true. Why is that? Because of that. Look at this. When we do the mechanics, when we impose the anterior segment, this force based on the contact that the anterior teeth have in uh, relation to the, the, the wire, we are going to have the loss of inclination, a free loss of inclination. This is what we call in orthodontics uncontrolled tipping, in which we have the line of action of the force still passing here. Why? Because we are not generating a body here. We are contacting the wire against the bottom of the slot. Well, this is just pushing the bottom of the slot forward, distantly, I mean, you know? And since we don't have a rigid contact here, I can't consider that the wire is part of the system, is part of the body. The wire is detached from the body. It's not the same body, okay? So it's just pushing forward the crowns of anterior teeth 
and then when we have it we make we let the crown go to go distal and the root go mesial and control tipping will put the center of rotation of the movement close to the center of resistance of that 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 unit that you are used that you are uh, distalizing now but in this case the center of rotation uh, the center of rotation positioning forward the, the 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 root is very bad because it's something that's going to contact this is going to make the contact a high contact a very strong contact between the apex of the roots of anterior teeth and the cortical plate you see everything here is very bad for what you want so the plane side the slot is like this for every 0 0.001 inch of difference between the height of the wire meaning 17 19 21 and 21 is good <laughs> and the slot a play of approximately four degrees is generated so in this math here you can see that when we use 1725 we have a difference of 005.005 inch in relation to the height of the slot itself and when we do the calculation we multiply the 5 by 4 we have 20 degrees being lost 20 degrees of play inside the slot meaning i can lose up to 20 degrees of inclination sometimes much more than that because we have other problems in the system but this is one thing that we must consider what is the option so you told me the problem Clever, but i want to have the option to do that i want to have the right solution for that so we, we must uh, address the right solution for our problems you know i always think about this the the way we have in orthodontics to control things is to anticipate the problem i know what's going to have to take place when i do this and doing that other thing to control this i can be faster i can have a, a faster mechanics okay so i can finish our my patients my treatments faster and i will take my time to uh, have a longer period of finalization of the treatment you know what i think in biomechanics is this if you do things faster in the beginning of the process and then you take your time to uh, uh spend like uh three four six months to do the finalization this is per perfect this is perfect is it all right this is perfect and uh, that's why i want to do things faster in the beginning of the process for example uh people say i just use this type of sequence of arch wires because i was taught that this is the best way to do things in orthodontics and i received i also received that uh sequence of arch wire from the company that sold me this bracket beautiful magic bracket and this magic wires well why do you want to use would you want to use the seek a long sequence of arch wire in the beginning of the alignment of aligned already aligned teeth meaning i have for example a biprotrusive profile and i want to do the retraction of both upper and lower teeth but i don't have crowding i don't have crowding in this case i will bond my brackets passively in a 1725 stainless steel arch wire for example it's easy for me to do that because i put everything in position and then i insert the wire in position and after that i will uh, like cure the brackets what i'm doing i'm speeding the process speeding up the process so i can uh spend more time in that part that really matters the finalization just a, an example of how things can be faster in orthodontics 22 21 25 in a 20 22 30 slot this is good because we have if and we apply a little bit of a torque in this wire when we insert inside the slot may be even better but we're not going to address this now just the play just the play and if we just and if, if we are looking just at this this detail the play inside the slot i will have much more control during the retraction meaning i'm doing the distalization i'm contacting the same way 
contacting the wire against the bottom of the slot and I'm pushing, okay? But in this case, I will only have uh, up to four degrees of inclination being lost because the plane side slot is just four degrees. Like this, we have just one point, oh, oh, one uh, inch of difference between the height of the slot and the height of the wire. So I have just one multiplied by four, which is what we see that we have in play, the relationship between the play, uh, the, the, the slot and the, the wire. So just four degrees of play inside the slot. Meaning for having a better mechanics in this situation here, I will need rigidity. I will need a very stiff arch wire, which is the 21, 25 in a uh, 22, 30 slot. Another question that you may be thinking about now. What if, because I use 18, 30 slot, not 22, 30. What if I use 17, 25? Yes, we have very little play inside the slot, but the problem in my mind is that the 1725 is not rigid enough. It's not rigid enough, meaning you may have this type of deflection of the wire with that C type, the C going down, you, need, you know, like a mountain this way, because the wire is not stiff enough to control the inclination of anterior teeth and to go against this high moment generated by the inclination of the teeth during the retraction because it's a very high moment generated when you have this inclination being lost and the contact between the two points of the slot and the wire it generates a very it generates a very high moment and the wire is not stiff enough to undergo uh, to uh to go against that type of inclination being lost so what i really want to do here in this case, is distalizing the anterior segment. Think about it. If I really have anterior segment as a unit, being a unit, rigid, very stiff arch wire, a rigid body being distalized, why do I need friction here? Why do I need friction at this position here? I have uh, a patent of one type of device that I developed several years ago with a good friend of mine, Dr. Weber Ursi, very skilled orthodontist. And uh, we have the Centrex system that takes th this into consideration and takes advantage of the process of distalization of anterior segment with a high line of vector on the force. This is something that you're going to see in our uh, 20, 20th uh, webinar, in our uh, January 20th, webinar i mean <laughs> and we have the possibility of applying the line of action of the force close to the center of resistance and some types of adjustment that we can do this is something that you can do in your, in your office you don't need the centrax for that i mean i'm just showing to you the thinking behind the process you can use that this way like this you can use this like a very stiff arch wire a very solid arch wire and you are ligating the, anterior, the complete anterior segment, the whole anterior segment. Another thing that people usually ask, don't we need to put everything together, ligate all anterior teeth? No, you don't need that because the distalization of anterior teeth will tend to close the space, not open the space. So you don't need to do that. And there's no difference when you do that. You just attach rigidly. And uh, if you want to use a more rigid uh, um, approach i would uh, recommend to use stainless steel ligatures so it's very very stiff so you are stiffening i don't know if that is word but the the, the 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 situation now the environment is stiffer this way so i'm gonna do the initialization this way but remember i will need to use for this 21 25 in a 22 30 slot rigid arch wire so let's go back to this, this, this thinking here. If I really have this anterior segment as a unit, I don't even need to ligate anterior and posterior segment. But pay attention. Is it really approaching, I mean, the line of action of the force? 
is it really approaching the center of resistance? You know, there are several variables that will change the center of resistance. We just think about an average center of resistance. It's an area, okay? But we don't really have certainty when we apply the line of action of the force. Eight, 10 millimeters high in relation to the center of the crown. We, this is not completely uh, granted that we are going to apply the line of action of the force in the center of resistance. So sometimes we can, we can change it. We must change it. So we are going to have a more controlled movement. But if we really, if we really uh, um, approach the center of resistance of anterior teeth, the line of action of the force, I mean, this, the movement's going to be extremely controlled. Um, a few days ago, I saw an, uh, a post on uh, Dr. Uh, Kevin O'Brien's blog saying good things about this. Very good strategies to close the gap, to close the space, and using some strategy. Uh, Patrick Fleming, my friend Patrick, did this uh, uh, post for Kevin O'Brien's blog. And he did a very good uh, tactic for doing the space closure. And one of the things that I saw in the comments was we can use high hooks for that. It depends. You can use high hooks. High hooks are very good solutions. But we have some problems here. What are the problems? We may have some problems. I mean, uh, well, I will aim the height, the, 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 the right height for positioning, for inserting the mini implant. It must be approximately 10 millimeters high in relation to the center of the crowns. Well, if your line of action of the force is passing horizontally, you have a high hook, 10 millimeters high, and you also put the uh, mini implant 10 millimeters high. Yes, it's a good solution. But what if your line of action of the force is not really passing through the center of resistance of anterior teeth? It's passing below. Well, of course, you have much, much less inclination. Okay? But you still have inclination. And if you can't afford no inclination, if you can't afford one degree of inclination, you mustn't understand that you, you, you will need to relocate the line of action of the force. How can you do that if you have already inserted the mini implant in the, high, in the height that you thought it was the best uh, for that situation? That's why nowadays I really practically not use anymore the mini implant inserted horizontally. I just use in almost all of my cases nowadays, nowadays, I use the vertical insertion of the mini implants, meaning the IZC, as you know, uh, in biomechanics, we know as IZC, infrazygomatic crest. But it's not really there. Okay, but it's vertical. So if I need to change the line of action of the force, I don't need to change the mini implant, the, the, the height of the mini implant. I don't need to remove the mini implant and position it in a different height, okay? And uh, that's why it's the best option nowadays to use the IZC if you're using this type of approach. And you have also different uh, hooks, height in heights, I mean, and you can adjust that. So you see that's not that perfect, not that good. You can change. Changing that, you are going to have a more controlled mechanics this way. And we can go like this. Of course, it's not magic, remember. But uh, this is a, I, I consider this a good option for doing the retraction uh, with a more controlled mechanics and with less friction because we know that friction is loss of, loss of uh, efficiency in biomechanics. So less friction, more control, and more uh, speed to close the space, saving more time for us to final finalize our treatments the best way we can. So this is a good strategy. Do things very fast in the beginning of, of the process so you can have more time to, fin to finish your treatments better. Everything is all right? Okay. My daughter here is helping me today, Julia.
<laughs> uh, so we have now the case that I treated this way. And uh, my process of doing that is really almost always, <laughs> almost always the same, which is I do the leveling and aligning of the teeth. And when I reach the rectangular arch wire, the stiffer rect rectangular arch wire, I'm not saying 1925 in this environment here. I'm saying 2125, okay? And I check. Do I have enough over jet to do the distillation? Do I have enough over jet to initiate the retraction of anterior teeth? Because it's not just about having the wire in position. You sometimes have the wire in position and then you do the extraction of the premolar and you try to retract. What's going to happen? Your me mechanics go is going to be stuck because you didn't pay enough attention to the process and to the environment. And you see that there is a contact between upper and lower anterior teeth. How can we spin, how can we retract in this situation? The bodies don't have to, the, the, don't occupy the same space at the same time, okay? So we must have the over jet so we can initiate the mechanics of retraction. This is another tip for you. It seems to be very clear, easy. Oh, okay, I'm not doing that, but many people do. Many people do this way. I see that. A lot. I see that very frequently in my daily practice. People coming to me to do a transfer treatment, a transfer case, uh, four years, five years trying to close the space, and you see that there is a narrow bone now because after extracting the premolar, you have the resor bone resorption. Five, six months after extracting the tooth or teeth that you extract, you're going to lose up to 50% of the bone volume so now you have a very difficult situation to work with i'm not saying that is impossible it is possible to do a very controlled movement in this situation but it's going to take longer why because you didn't pay attention that there was a contact between upper and lower teeth so before doing the extraction do we have the perfect conditions do we have the best environment the best system now to do the extraction and then we extract and start the retraction the same day if possible if possible meaning i want to take advantage of the process of doing the extraction do you know the rap the rapid acceleratory phenomenon that gives to us this opportunity of fasten up the mechanics for up to three to four months so do that do the extraction the day you're going to do the retraction, okay? And, okay, again, let's move on. Doing the leveling and alignment. You see, running the sequence of arch wires. And here I have like a round arch wire. Yes, probably 18, 018. And we go on and on. We have here what, what we call the active space maintainer. Meaning I open the space here between these two incisors and now I'm coming forward. I'm pulling the incisor forward. And um, another question that frequently I frequently see in this type of case. Why not use um, other types of device like two, brack, uh, two wires, a rigid one, and I'm more flexible to do the leveling of the not well aligned tooth. Why? Because we have more friction. So I prefer to do this this way. This is a O20 strip uh, a, a piece of uh, O20 piece of stainless steel arch wire compressed a little bit so we can open a little bit more the space while we're doing the leveling of the unleveled tooth. And we go on. And when we reach the O21, O25, stainless steel arch wire, I'll do the retraction. Look at this type of system here. We have now over jet. We have clearance to initiate the mechanics, the retraction. And I can do that with this solid mechanics. But look, it seems to be perfect for me now. 
like eight millimeters high in relation to the center uh, of the crowns, which is supposed to be positioned, in which is supposed to be positioned the center of resistance of anterior segment. And uh, now I do the retraction. What force do I use for that? I do uh, 20, uh, 250 grams each per side, each side, okay? And this is a 21-25 arch wire. And I did that with the arch wire itself. I did like 90 degree bend in this arch wire here. And then I bend it again uh, downwards and did this hook uh, in the arch wire itself. Meaning I have a very rigid arch wire for doing the retraction. And also I added some flowable resin here to enrich the process, to make more stiff the process, okay? Uh, so we're going distal, but look at that. It seems to be okay, huh? But look at this thing here. The K9 distalized the crown, but the root went forward, meaning there's a gap. There's something happening here that made this type of movement not perfect. What is this? Lack of stiffness rigidity of the system even with 121 25 we have this also maybe we position we pass the line of action of the force below the center of resistance and we lost a little bit of inclination you see in this case this is a case that i treated like 15 or something years ago but nowadays i would have used a high hook uh, i'm sorry uh, an icc mini implant and I would do this type of mechanics going up and down, depending on the outcome that I see during the, the retraction. And this is something that I would do differently nowadays. Not a mini implant horizontally positioned, but also let me see something here. Okay, okay, very good. Some questions I will take time after this class here to answer, okay? Okay, let's move on. This is okay. Okay, now I'm doing the correction of the inclination of anterior segment and also the inclination or the angulation. I mean, in this case, the angulation of the molar. How can I do that? How do I do that? Do you know? It's about the geometries. Mm. This is what we call the geometry number six the best geometry that there is. In the past, yes, you could use far, five, just a second. I think there are some people asking about the second molar in the process or the molar. I didn't do the molar, I didn't dis use the molar as part of the mechanics because I wanted to distalize into your segment and that's all. And after that, I can use the loops for doing the to lose inclination to lose anchorage to burn anchorage this way let's not burn to lose anchorage to misalize the molar i'm using here the loop the delta loop for having more flexibility to do that and i'm applying the geometry number six okay meaning i'm trying to avoid the vertical components of the force and i'm focusing on the moments and the moments here they are opposite and this is good for this situation. So if I know what I want, I know how to apply the mechanics, I know how to apply the geometries in, ca in cases like that, I will have a faster movement. What I'm doing, I'm uprighting the molar with the geometry number six, and at the same time, apply a torque to the anterior segment. And I compress the loop a little bit to avoiding this type of distalization of the crowds. And again, knowing what we want, we turn things very easy in our, in our practice, okay? And here we have it. After uh, closing the space, and I also have this case 15 or something years after this, I'm going to show to you in our webinar, okay? Here, before and after, so we have a controlled movement. First mistake, don't take for granted the high hooks. They are there to help you. 
but we must give to the process more efficiency. How we do that? Stiffness. The name of the game in that situation is stiffness. Another common mistake. You probably see that a lot in the Instagram, in your uh, social medias. What? Questions? Can you just bring, uh, screenshot the question then you can hit me? Okay, let's move on because we don't have enough much time today. I just want to show one more mistake then we can go on with the questions, okay? Well, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. yes, we want to close the space, we want to close the diastema between the central incisors and sometimes it makes sense. Well, I'm applying the force here and I see that the outcome is always the same. I'm having the space being closed this way with the crown going to the center, but the roots are not good. And what do I do? What I think about? Well, what if I can use like um, bottoms in a higher position to try to close the space this way? Is it going to be perfect mechanics? Seems to be. I know that it, this um, common sense mechanics, we think about it as well. I'm putting the not another type of line of action, another moment, but you see the moments are in the same direction. You're having just another moment closer to the center of resistance, but still not really doing the movement, the bodily movement that you're aiming at. In this case, you still have this inclination. If you are doing that in a very, uh, not a big space, a little, uh, a little space that you are going to close, you're not to see, you're not going to see that because of the rigidity of the arch wire and you're going to have a movement, a more controlled movement, but not as you're thinking because the line of action of the force is still passing below the center of resistance. This is not the right way to do that. Not the right way to do that, okay? And now we do this type of mechanics. Oh, I can use here a rigid, a very stiff arch wire to control that. You can do that, but when you do that, you're adding another thing to the process, which is what? Friction. <laughs> friction, friction is higher now. And if you have a high friction, you have less efficiency in the process, okay? And if you have a very large space to be closed, don't expect to have a controlled movement this way. Because again, line of action of the force is going to pass uh, below the center of resistance. Yes, you have a rigid arch wire here. But if you have a rigid arch wire, the angulation generated in the beginning of the process will give you the binding of the arch. You give in, will, will give you the notching of the arch. So you're going to have, uh, your movement is going to be stuck at some place, at some point, okay? There is another way to do that. I mean, there is another strategy to do that, which is positioning a higher, a higher hook. But again, you must have stiffness. I've seen people using this type of mechanics, putting a hook, not attached, really attached to the wire, or I'm sorry, to the bracket. It must be solid, solid attached to the bracket, to the bracket, and then we have the high line of action of the force. But if you're just contacting, I see people using that with like a, a sliding mechanics. If you're just contacting the bracket, you're not using this as a unit. The unit here is the bracket, the, 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 the tooth, and the hook, one unit. And this unit is going to be moved in a more controlled way. But if you don't have stiffness, you don't have a rigid ligation between the hook and the, and the bracket, you're not having this. You're not having this, okay? And this is what we have this way. By the way, I have a new patent that's going to be soon released in which you're going, I think, will help you a lot on this type of mechanics and other types of mechanics also. Look at this. In this case, I close the space, extract the central incisors, and I close the space, positioning the lateral incisor in the, uh, the position of the central, the canine, in the position of the lateral, and I was substituting 
uh, teeth, lost teeth by other teeth this way. Lateral going to the center. The canines are going to be in the position of the lateral. And uh, look at the space being closed this way. A high hook. Very solid ligation. I did I welded this uh, hook to the bracket. I removed the bracket. I welded the hook to the bracket. And I have now a hook made by made of a stainless steel 1925 strip of our uh, strip of uh, stainless steel and the high line of action of the force look at this i'm going back look at the movement you see the movement almost no inclination here almost no inclination or angulation because this is the second uh, key of uh, normal occlusion and we have the angulation being controlled during the movement and this is the central in the position of the uh, the lateral position of the central so the movement was this another situation just to uh, yes to finish our uh, live today same thing we saw I see that a lot also people using this type of strategy uh, have a lost central or lateral incisor or whatever and I want to open the space what do I use for that if I use the coil spring the compressed coil spring this way I will have this type of mechanics you know that we are going to generate a moment and the moment is going to open the space in the crown and close the space in the apex remember I'm showing to you some things here but I'm going further in the explanation in our webinar. 20th, 11 a.m. GMT. 11 a.m. GMT. And people ask me, Prof, can you do that later? You know, the problem is, guys, that we have people from all over the world, which is, I'm, I'm very proud of that, putting many people in the same environment, the same class. But it's a problem for me because I can't do that uh, in a time, in a certain time, that will be good for all the countries, you know. And uh, yes, I feel I, I feel bad for that because I want to do this, but it's very difficult. Once, uh, since we don't have um, a right time for um, covering all the good times in all countries, you know. So 11 a.m. Don't miss it. I will have several solutions for you there. Look at this. I'm opening the space. Now I have space, enough space in the crown, but I have less space in the roots, between the roots of the neighboring teeth. What can I do for that? I see people doing this type of stuff. Uh, position in the bracket in a higher position and using now a steam, uh, coil spring in that position. The problem is not put, putting this to act this way. The problem is thinking that you are having a moment that will diverge the roots of the neighboring teeth. It's not going to happen this way. Of course, you have a less moment, you have less moment, and the center of rot rotation of this process, if I position this like five millimeters high, five millimeters high in relation to the center of resistance, I'll have a different center of rotation yes it's true but you're not giving the right approach to this type of process okay still under up below the center of resistance so not really uh diverging the roots this is what's going to happen because you are not applying the line of action of the force that you want and uh during this informative or this uh informal webinar it's raining here in brazil now in salvador bahia <laughs> which is not common that much very common in this this period of the year uh you see i'm just dealing now with one line of action of the force i'm not explaining to you because some people want to make it simple yes it's possible i just want to use one line of action of the force for everything is it possible possible it is the problem is that you must have a very good strategy to understand what is the problem that's going to be generated. And there is always a problem when you lose 
when you don't position the line of action of the force in the right height in relation to the center of resistance. And there's another problem. You're just seeing the bidimensional position of those teeth. We are not seeing that those teeth tridimensionally. So we still have a problem. And if you want to use one line of action, you must have strategies to overcome the problems that will come. And they will come. Okay? And in this class, I'm just focusing on that. Next class, I'm going to show to you some strategies that you can use to overcome these problems using two moments. One line of action plus another moment. It can be torque. It can be loop. There are several possibilities. Okay? Now we are approaching the end of our class. Do you have questions? Okay, Prof, how to determine the arm length, each geometry uh, of the loop spring? Well, how to determine? We have several, several articles showing uh, the calculations with finite elements. Where is the line of, where is the center of resistance of one tooth, uh, single rooted tooth, uh, multi rooted tooth, a group of teeth? So we base our our arm length, our arm length, on that. What is the correct position or expected position for the center of rotation in this situation? Wait. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, so we just have other things to think about it regarding the, the last question. Also, do we have, do we have, um, like, um, uh, bone loss? Do we have root resorption? Those things will also change. The, 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 the point will also change the position of the center of resistance. Okay? So, we are really just trying to do things right, but we must adapt, <laughs> always. <laughs> How do we make a solid unit between the bracket and the hook? Yes, you can weld the bracket to the hook. Let me answer this question in the, last, the next webinar, okay? Because I'll have some options for you. I have another bracket. I weld the bracket to the hook, and I try to find the right position, okay? More? Thank you. Good. Kind of explain the process of soldering bracket with, okay, I'm going to do that in our next uh, webinar, our next live, next week, on Thursday. <laughs> okay. Is there any way to reduce or stop tongue, tongue resting? I, 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 I don't think I understand your question. To reduce or stop, well, can you explain better? Because I really don't understand what you mean about it. It's about the mechanics of closing the space or like tongue thrusting in, um, in adolescent or in, in child. Awesome class. Thank you very much, Gabriel. Uh, for the closure of the midline diastema, can you also add gable band to upright the root? Yes, 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 you're right. The diastema, you can do that, but look at this. How can you do that in a straight wire mechanics? Because if you do that, like a bending, a second, a second order Z band, for example, you can do that because you have a high friction. So you must uh, finish the process of closing the space, closing the diastema, and then you go on the correction. You can go on doing that with the Z loop or the Z band, second order Z band, or you can just attach one loop to those two teeth using the geometry number six. Another strategy for that would be this. Why not use closing loop closing for midline just a closure? Yeah, very good option. <laughs> yeah, it's a very good option. I, I see that many people is doing this way. I do another way, but this is something that we frequently see. The best luck lecture are doc. Okay, thank you very much. I'm watching you from the publication of Ah, Yemen. So, hello, Yemen. <laughs> Thank you for that.
guys uh i'm closing out our i know you must be okay one question one more question <laughs> hi sir uh dirty white coat uh how efficient is bract repositioning for root parallelism and midline diastema correction this is another strategy you are completely right you can do the rebounding but when you do that you go backwards in your sequence of arch wires i prefer to use loops for doing that or use bands of course the band will depend on the magnitude of the correction that is needed but i usually use bands for mild corrections not very large corrections okay good we are good <laughs> guys thank you very much for being with me this is something that we put up very fast today I didn't know if it was going to work, but I think it worked. I think it worked. Next week, uh, we're going to do that on Thursday again. And I'm giving you more strategies not to go wrong in your mechanics. Trying to understand the process and overcome the problems even before the problems arise. Okay? See you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you very much for that.